All right, Tyler Mayforth, Cameron Irvine. Cameron, the last time we talked, mm -hmm. uh, you were just with Bobcat Illustrated. Now you were at the New Braunfels Herald Zeitung. First of all, congratulations on your new job. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, but you're still here at Bobcat Stadium. Great place to be, but not tonight. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're a uh, penalty flag, because you sure got abused tonight. Uh, Texas State, 15 penalties, 156 yards, only eight for 50 for ULM. But that was the the. the the easy for you to say, the turning point of the game, your thoughts on the game, I thought it was the penalties. Yeah, I, you know, penalties were key, especially to Erickson. Um, and I'm not ex I'm not sure exactly what happened. Fran said that the official said he threw a punch. Um, on the second one. Yeah, on the, on the second one. But, uh, yeah, penalties were tough. But, uh, I mean, how, you can't ignore the two pick sixes either. Those are backbreakers no matter how they, I mean, ask Matt Schaub. Oh. They're, they're, they're killers. And, you know, on those pick sixes to kind of play off that point, it looked on the first one that it was a bad route um, by Jafis Gaines, who just returned from a broken leg. Uh, this was his first action. He didn't play last week. He dressed but didn't play. It looks like he, he, went, he went out. Jones threw it in. Newsom was right there, picked that one off. But that second interception, my God, what a play by Newsom. What can you say about how Newsom played tonight? Yeah, I mean, one, he snagged it one-handed, uh, and uh, just right place at the right time. I mean, anytime you set a Sun Belt record, um, that's pretty impressive, and he was impressive. And uh, like I wrote up in my recap, he single-handedly, no pun intended, won the game for, for Monroe. I mean, without those 14 points, Monroe would not have won that game because their offense just could not get it going at all. I think you needed to add a waka waka at the end of that, uh, <laughs> that pun there, but you're right. Texas State's defense looked tremendous out there. I mean, they held ULM to 2 of 15 on third downs. Those two, though, came on the last drive. That kind of broke Texas State's back. It really did because the Warhawks won the game on that last drive, left the Bobcats with 18 seconds left to drive the ball, I guess about 30 yards after Brandon Smith's uh, return. Mm -hmm. With all three timeouts, we'll get to that in a little bit, but... Overall, the Bobcats outgained them 358 to 192, held them to one offensive touchdown. You'd think that would do it, but the Texas State offense did not get it done. Penalties killed it. Yeah, and when and when you hold an opponent to 192 yards with their backup quarterback and you're at home and you'll win, that's a red flag for a lot of problems. And I, if I was Fran, the coaching staff, anybody associated with Texas State tonight, I would not feel good at all about uh, how the game went. Obviously, the defense played great. David Mayo had a, another impressive night, 11 tackles and a pick. But uh, it's, it's tough. That's a tough one to swallow. And and Francione was saying in the post game that he was proud of the way that they fought. He was proud of the way Texas State you know, went out there and put their all forward, put their best foot forward, especially after last week's mm -hmm. horrible loss, the 48-24 to loss to Louisiana Rage Cajuns that just did not look good at all. This was a different kind of loss. They fought. The offense, they outgained them. The defense held, you know, Monroe's offense to 192 yards, as we said. And Robert Lowe, another tremendous mm -hmm. game from him. But ultimately, it was just the little things that Fran said that got, that added up. The penalties to Andy Erickson, the, the false start penalties, the, you know, the inability to actually hit the big play that Fran said. And, they were also victimized by drops tonight. There were yeah. a lot of balls that were dropped, especially a beautiful ball, one of the best balls uh, Tyler Arndt threw all season long that Texas State had down here when um, I it was second and 10, second and 12 after Andy Erickson's ejected from the game due to a second uh, penalty, a second personal foul or unsportsmanlike conduct, and um, right in, hit him, hit Aja in the chest, dropped it. Could have been a huge play in their territory, turns into nothing but the offense hurt my drops as well. Well, and that was right in front of us, too. We were down on the field, and uh, I don't think a lot of us could have, could believe it, although in some ways we could believe it after what was going on tonight. But you saw the Lafayette loss in person, and this game was a, a turnaround for the defense. But for an offense that a couple of weeks ago used a three-and-a-half-hour rain delay to score 35 points, it seems like the magic came and went, and they, they, just, they just can't figure it out. And I don't know that... Tyler Art came in, and I mean, I don't think he certainly did anything to help his chances of getting back in. Six for 19 was unimpressive. Not all of them were his fault, but there were some where it's just, you know, you just have to put those on the money. 
All right, we said we'd get back to it, and now we're finally getting back to it. A lot of questions on Twitter about this one. I asked Fran after the game. So, Fran, he had three timeouts left with him having the ball, three minutes left, four minutes left. You went to the locker room with three timeouts. Uh, that's not something you usually want to do. Um, I phrase it a different way, of course. But um, did you buy his explanation that he wanted to ice the kicker three times in a row at the end of the game? I mean, I get the ice the kicker. Some people believe in it. Some people don't. I, I don't know that it really works that well. But I think that when you're in a, when you're in a tie game, and I mean, I, I thought personally, when I first saw it, I thought he's playing for overtime. He wants them to make you know, some sort of time management mistake, because they only had one, one timeout time left, wanted them to make some sort of time management mistake and wanted to maybe get into overtime and, and get lucky that way, or maybe use one on the ice to kicker. But uh, with 38 seconds to go, when they got that first, or when they uh, had a first down, got to second down, I thought he, by far uh, that a timeout should have been called, at least one, just to, to, to give your defense a... a Put them in a position to reset. Put uh, just there were so many different situations where you could have used that timeout, and it was surprising. And we heard a, we heard some fans in the uh, in the crowd yelling in frustration about them not being called. And you're right, Tyler. I mean, if you lose a close game, the timeout should always read zero. They should never read three, let alone one or two. And the way that I thought the timeouts should have been used, uh, I thought Fran had an opportunity to use some in that last drive by ULM. Maybe when they were stuck with a third down, even though your defense has momentum, use one. Put them on the sideline. Make them think about what they're going to do. Because they did not show any capability of moving the ball on third yeah. down. I think they were 0 for 13 at the time that I thought a timeout should have been used. But it wasn't. They converted. And then first down, second down, nothing. Third down, converted again. And then Texas A goes down and um, you know lets ULM punch it in for the touchdown. And that's, that's all she wrote. But, um, you know... We were talking, I guess Fran said in his, his Tuesday press conference that there were too many mentions of the B word around mm-hmm. this program the past couple years. The past, not couple years, sorry, the past couple of days, mm-hmm. um, especially after the win against Wyoming. The B meaning bowl. Um, so Cameron, after what you see tonight, after what you saw last week, you know, through the stats, and th- so far, three and three mm-hmm. through six games, do the Bobcats have what it takes to finish five and two or... Five and one, actually, the rest of the way, because I don't think they're going to get into a bowl with only seven wins. Yeah, I mean, uh, you have to think that Idaho and Georgia State are are must wins because if you don't get wins there, uh, you're really going to struggle against against the rest of your competition. If you get wins in those games, that's five, but you kind of put yourself behind the eight ball. Now you're zero and two in the Sun Belt. The odds that you finish in the top two in the conference are very slim now, and uh, so the, so you have to get the at large. You have to, you know get eight wins, nine wins, it's, it's going to be really difficult. And it's those things like Erickson's two unsportsmanlikes and the 15 penalties and and just every little mistake tonight that Fran mentioned in the press conference, that's the difference between a bowl game and sitting at home again. And I think, I think we saw that come to the surface tonight, unfortunately. And tonight that was the difference between three and three and four and two.